This video of an Arabic trainer went viral as she went through her moves with the Myanmar coup unfolding right behind her. On the 1st of February, Myanmar's military seized control of the nation and detained former state councillor Aung San Suu Kyi and other democratically elected leaders. Now, thousands of people are protesting against the military coup. Who is leading the protests? The protests in Myanmar have grown organically and are largely leaderless. Activist groups, professional work groups, and people from all walks of life have come out on the streets in opposition to the coup. So has Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy Party. This coup has marked a return to the direct military rule which Myanmar went through for five decades until 2012. Now, social media is playing a key role in organizing protest. A Facebook page titled Civil Disobedience Movement started issuing calls for peaceful protests. The page now has more than 230,000 followers and hashtags associated with it are widely used by Myanmar Twitter users. Myanmar's healthcare workers have also started their own campaign. Medics are wearing red ribbons, holding signs and urging other medical staff to not work at state-operated health facilities. Unions, student groups and individuals are participating in street protests. But these protesters may face serious consequences for displaying their dissent. Myanmar military's efforts to clamp down on protests. Myanmar's military had declared a state of emergency right after the February 1st coup. But with the protests growing and spreading in recent days, the military on Monday issued decrees that effectively banned peaceful public protests in the country's two biggest cities. Rallies and gatherings of more than five people, along with motorized processions, are outlawed. A curfew from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. has been imposed in many areas of Yangon and Mandalay. These are the two cities where thousands of people have been demonstrating since the 6th of February. The restrictions have raised concerns about the potential for a violent crackdown. What are the obstacles for protesters? One of the biggest challenges for protesters has been the military's attempts to block communications. Authorities first went after Facebook, which has more than 22 million users in Myanmar. But people have simply moved to other platforms like Twitter. Over the weekend, the military temporarily cut internet access and some phone services. But this did not deter protesters who quickly figured out ways around the blocks. Some even started using phones registered in neighboring Thailand. When nothing else worked, word of mouth and simply historical precedent brought protesters to the streets. Will the protests continue? So far, protesters seem undeterred, even with the new restrictions in place. But some are concerned that the military is laying the groundwork for a violent crackdown. In 2007 and 1988, violent crackdowns by the military had ended protest movements in Myanmar. This time, on the 9th of February, authorities used water cannons and rubber bullets on protesters, which many fear could be only the beginning.